I didn't uh, get much sleep last night or the night before, so I'm either going to be giddy or crabby. One of the two. You can be, you'll take what you get, sister. <laughs> Mother-in-law. See how I did that? <laughs> Galatians 5. Let me dispel... Now, I'm being dead serious uh, this morning. I want to dispel some uh, doubt and fear. Whoever's up in the booth, fix that clock. That still said 9 o'clock. I'm liable to preach till 3 this afternoon. Um, let me just, be in all honesty, I got emails from people and it... it you know, well-meaning, and I understand the World Wide Web is full of information. Um, it is, but there's some, there's some irresponsibleness out there from a lot of people, and some of it's from the news media. There was a lady on Fox 2 this morning, she's with Emergency Services of Melville, and she said, and I thought about recording it just to write her an email after this thing's over, she said that 40% of the St. Louis area, over, which is 3 million plus people, so about a million and a half people were going to get this virus and 10,000 were going to die of it in the St. Louis area alone. And I'm going, that is irresponsible. That is ridiculous. That was on Fox 2 this morning. Okay? That's, that's, I'm more worried about everybody's panic Yeah, I know, and it's, I don't, I, I will say this, okay, the book of Hebrews says that Noah was moved with fear to prepare the ark for him and his family. I don't have a problem with preparation, I don't. Um, I think you can go overboard with it. And I think there's people out there that are just willing to use stuff like this to take your money. There's, there's money being made in disasters. The news media is making money hand over fist. But the, there are people that are losing out. There are people who cannot go to work now because of it. Uh, there are people who are restricted for a lot of various reasons because of it. And um, so it, it, it gets... There's, there's some account, should be some accountability with this. But I also will say this, watch out for the online people, and I've 20 plus years of doing this, and I'm telling you, every crisis that comes out, or potential crisis, there's always some prophecy website where somebody's saying, this is it, this is it, right here, this is it, this is going to start everything. And I've just learned, listen, we made it through the swine flu, We've made it through the Heine virus. That's H1N1. It looks like Heine when it's written out. My friend Chuck Thurston, medical doctor, came up with that. He's the guy that showed me the cell was the tabernacle. But anyway, he's got a sense of humor like mine. But we made it through all that. We made it through the comments that were supposed to come collide with the earth. We made it through. We, I just don't get it. And especially when some guy... I got sent to a website last night. Number one, the article that I was sent to was surrounded by ads. Cha-ching. I get that. Because when you go to that website, that guy makes money just because you went there. Because he's got ads all over his website, and they pay him for every click. It's called clickbait. And they pay that guy for everybody that reads that article. Second of all, the article was half cut off because you have to pay him money to read the rest of it. That tells, that says something to me, okay? And his excuse is he has to pay a cloud service for everybody that goes, on, goes to his online and reads his article. I pay cloud fees every year, $500 a year to Dropbox, and we get five terabytes of storage. That's a lot, okay? It doesn't cost what he's saying it does. But anyway, he supposedly has three insiders. That always trips my trigger, especially when they go unnamed. 
three insiders in the government telling me we're going to be restricted to our houses in a week. So I wrote the guy back and I said, D forgive my cynicism. I've seen this before. Let me know if the guy who wrote this article apologizes for lying to everybody in a week. Let me know. Because if somebody, when you've got three insiders and they won't come out and tell who they are and go on camera and say, this is an official government document saying this is what's going to happen, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I'm skeptical of stuff on the internet and I'm on the internet. We're on the internet now. Be skeptical. Skeptical. I haven't had much sleep. Um, some people are asking me, is this a tribulation? No. The bad news is, that's going to be much worse. And we'll know it. There'll be no, nobody will ask me the question, is this it? We'll know it. Noah knew. Noah knew. How did Noah know? Number one, God told him, gave him two time frames, 120 years, gave him seven days. And then... When the doors shut, he knew, and then when he heard pitter-patters on the roof of the ark, he knew. He knew what was happening. And so Noah knew. Elijah knew. Lot knew. Um, let, me, let me give you this. Hold your place in Galatians 5 or not. You don't have to. But let me read you. Um, turn to 2 Peter. I think it's 2 Peter, what I'm thinking. The way I've got it in my mind, it's in 2 Peter. Yeah. Look at verse 4, 2 Peter chapter 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved into judgment. Who did that? God did. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person. God judged the wicked... But what did he do with the righteous? Saved them. So what's he going to do to us? He's going to save us. A preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. Condemned them with an overthrow. Making them an example to those that after should live ungodly. Delivered just Lot. God judged Sodom. What did he do to Lot? Delivered him. Vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Now I will say this. I'm hearing from a lot of people. Their worry, their fear, and it seems to be very pervasive. I'm feeling it. And a lot of other people are too. I thought it was just me, but it's eaten up a lot of people. Okay? This is the purpose of what we have in our hands. The gold that is going to keep us is the words of this book. Look at verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. Underline that in your Bible and put, make a bumper sticker and put that on your car. And to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Understand this. Nobody in this world gets away with anything. Nobody does. Okay? All of the ungodly and all the wicked that are in this country that are part of the ruling class in this country, the elite that thinks they can get by with everything, God's reserving them. Under, they're not going to get by with one thing. Jeffrey Epstein didn't. And that guy was wicked. He had seven girls a day was his diet. Seven a day. That man was evil. And he's in judgment right now. Now, don't fret, people. Don't fret. God knows how to deliver his people. Say amen. amen. All right. Now, 2 Thessalonians 2. Um, God gives us the things to look for. Um, Galatians 5 tells us, Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I don't want to go back to the old days. I don't want to go back to those days. My place is moving forward. Let us press, forgetting those things that, be, that are behind, let us press toward, forward, the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. That means the goal. 
where the, the bullseye is what that word mark means, the bullseye, where the arrow hits, let's press toward that. We have a goal that we're headed for, and it's New Jerusalem. So 2 Thessalonians 2, let's read verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that, read this, contemplate this, meditate on this, that you be not soon shaken in mind. And I know that when you hear this news and you read stuff on the internet, it freaks people out, okay? My advice to you, close the internet for a while, open your Bible for a while, balance it out. It's okay to read stuff. It's okay to be informed. I'm a watchman. I have to watch for when the sword cometh, okay? I also have a responsibility not to keep blowing a false trumpet. Because if you blow a false trumpet, at some point, people are going to say, that's Hoggard again. And they're not going to listen. And that is a responsibility that a lot of people don't understand. They post or repost stuff on Facebook or social media that they do not know if it's true or not. And they say things or they repost things that are nothing more than hype and sensationalism meant to get you to go to their website so they can make money off of it. And they never, they never apologize for when they're wrong. They never do. They just keep raking in the money, playing off people's fears. That's what a lot of this is. Okay? So, it's okay to watch what's going on in this world. Be careful what you spread. Okay? I saluted guys Friday that were in the military. I did not shake their hand. It's okay to be cautious. And I heard something good this morning out of all that. This virus does kill people that are sick and elderly. Okay? So hopefully it'll affect Congress first. That's a good one. So if nothing else, be cautious just for them. Everybody's grandma, everybody's grandpa, people in nursing homes, people who are not as healthy as others, if your body is healthy, you probably don't have anything to worry about with this. They interviewed a lady, and she had the whole thing. She said, I had a little fever, I felt a little achy every now and then, but I'm fine. Healthy with people will live through it. So it's okay to be cautious just for the sake of people who are not going to do so well with it. That's common sense flu season anyway, okay? Some of this stuff, just so overblown. But anyway, but be careful what you spread. Because false prophecies are viruses. They're just as poisonous as false doctrine is. When you keep sounding the alarm on things that never happen, this is why people around you don't listen to you anymore. How many times have you been wrong? How many times have I been wrong? So there's a responsibility that comes with being a watchman. If you're going to say things, make sure they're in line with the scriptures. But that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit. Spirit will trouble you. Amen? I ought to reserve this for the message this morning. Spirits will trouble you. They will. Okay? Nor by word. People's words will trouble you. Nor by letter as from us. He didn't say a letter from us. As from us. False Doctrines, false prophets, false warnings are the false warnings are more dangerous than no warning. Again, because people quit listening. So when somebody really blows the trumpet, they don't listen. So he said, as that the day of Christ is at hand, don't let anybody deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first how did, again i'm gonna ask this question how did noah know that it was judgment day the rain was falling how did lot know it was judgment day huh brimstone was falling are you catching the similarities here
There's things, gonna, there's things up here going to fall down. Revelation 12 says it. Isaiah 13 says it. Revelation 6 says it. You see it here. There's going to be a shaking of heaven. And stuff's going to fall out. Okay? It's like shaking the uh, mini blinds. You ever shake the mini blinds? Oh, it's gross. Or it accidentally hit the ceiling fan. <laughs> right? Then you'll know. Then you'll know. He's given you things to watch for. And God is always good about giving his people advance notice. He always did it. Always did it. Okay? He did it with Noah. He did it with Lot. He, he let David know that people were after him. He's always let his people know. So pay attention to scriptures. When you are feeling the fear and the anxiety of what's going on in this world, get your Bible, shut off the television, get off Facebook, get off YouTube, get in the Word. Read this book. Amen? Okay? Verse... Anyway, that come a fallen away first, and that man of sin be revealed the center of perdition. All right, now turn to Hebrews 6. I'm going to deal with a, a doctrinal issue, and everybody's got opinions on Hebrews 6. And I'm going to give you mine, okay? Some say this is a hypothetical that never happens. I don't see it that way, but I don't, I don't make a big deal about it. Hebrews 6 there's a lot here to take into consideration about those who fall away. I've been in church most of my life, and I can name names of people that I watched fall away. I watched them do it. From a boy, I watched people do it. Okay, and as a boy, it troubled me, because some of these guys were my Sunday school teachers. They were the offering takers they were the, the elders the leaders of the church and they were gone some of them died gone died in that state and that always shook me as a young man because i thought man if it can happen to these guys who am i so hebrews 6 notice what's being said here let's pick it up in verse 2, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead and, and eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. Think Saul. Saul, King Saul, was once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift. He prophesied. On the day that he was anointed, he prophesied with the prophets, and they said, Is Saul among the prophets? And have tasted the heavenly gift, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God, and the powers of the world to come. If they shall, and it's the same words here, fall away. If they shall fall away, it is impossible to renew them again unto repentance. What happened with, he, see there's an example for everything in the Bible. What happened with Saul? Once Saul rejected the word of the Lord, did God say, okay Saul, I'll give you three more chances after this one. He cut him off right then and there. He said, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, I have also rejected thee from being king. And right after that, because right after that, Saul tried to repent. And Samuel said, forget it. I'm not, I'm not hearing it. God's not forgiving you. You're done. And what happened after that? The Bible specifically says that the Holy Spirit of God left Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord went to him. And then what religion did he turn to at the end of his life that caused his downfall? familiar spirits because God no longer would talk to him through prophet or dream or vision or Urim. In other words, what happens with people is 
they don't believe this book anymore. They don't believe what it says. God pulls it away from them and says, I'm not, you're not even going to believe. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to talk to you. That's a scary place. I don't want to be there. I don't want to be there. You can. Okay. We can backslide. A just man falleth seven times. We can backslide and come back. Prodigal son come back. Okay. I compare Saul and Solomon because God did with David. He said, the son that comes from you, I will be his father and he'll be my son. And if he sin against me, I'll chasten him with the rod and the stripes. But my mercy will, not, will I not take from him as I took it from Saul. So here's what I think Saul did. You know, there's one sin that God said he will not forgive. It's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And I think blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is related to rejecting the word. Because that's what Saul did. And as at that point, God cut him off. Boom. Saul was like night of the living dead. He walked around in, in skin and bones and was already damned. And he spent the rest of his life that way, hating David. And who's David? It's a picture of Christ. Hates the word of God. And even lied when he was confronted about it. He lied and said, I, I did too keep God's word. No, you didn't. See, now you're lying. If you're going to lie, that's why I've been telling you, don't lie to God. Don't ever lie to God. Okay? So I see this falling away here. Saul being the example of that. Because, like I said, we've all gone back, but God has always brought us back. But he's done it with a rod. No one, no one backslides, but what God doesn't chasten them over it. Raise your hand if you've been there. So you understand it. Saul refused God's chastening. Therefore, he is what Hebrews 12 says he is, a bastard and not a son. If you're not a son, you don't get the inheritance. Okay? So... Look at it like this. For if they shall fall away, verse 6, it is impossible to renew them again under repentance. And the impossible part comes from verse 4, because all one sentence. It's impossible to renew them again under repentance. Seeing they crucified themselves, the Son of God afresh, put him to an open shame. Okay? So there are some, and this was brought into this church at one point, and I did not tolerate it. There are some who say you lose your salvation when you sin, you get it back when you repent, and you're constantly having to repent to keep, your, to keep yourself saved. That also is not true. That's a lie. That's, that's called repeated regeneration because this verse here says that. You're crucifying, you're doing what the Catholic priest does. You're crucifying Christ all over again, putting him to an open shame. Save me again, God. Save me again, God. And it's a constantly, you're hanging on the barest thread of salvation, hoping that you die at the right time. Okay? And that is a lie, too. So, now notice, he's, I'm going to keep going here in the verses because there's something to add to this. For, for means, it's related to what he just said, for the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs, meat for them whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. Blessing is always salvation. And what he's talking about here, remember the parable of the seed and the sower. When the seed is sown on good ground, when the rains come down, what happens to the seed? It brings forth fruit. That's salvation. That is salvation. But, verse 8, that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and nigh unto what? Cursing is the opposite of blessing. Notice in the parable of the seed and the sower, he includes that which was sown among thorns. The thorns choked out the word, the Bible that was preached and taught and memorized and studied and, 
at one time believed. But then people just give it up and walk away from it and go back. And Peter, Peter dealt with that issue as well. Go back to, let's see, is it 2 Peter? Yeah, 2 Peter 2. Peter dealt with this, verse 21. For it had been better for them to not have known the way of righteousness than after they've known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is returned to his own vomit again. You ever seen a dog do that? That's disgusting. The dog has turned to his own vomit again. The sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. And you let that dog lick your face. What's wrong with you? You know how they clean themselves? Are you? But the dog's mouth is the cleanest thing. No, I don't believe that. Okay? Anyway, that's the example that God gives you. They turn from it. Okay, now, the question is, among some people, does this mean they lost their salvation? I'm of the belief, I studied this out. I wanted to know real salvation, real salvation. I don't see it being lost, but I see false brethren. False brethren. They came in, they were there for a while, they left. Here's what John said about it. John said, they, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have remained with us. So yes, there are people who come in, false brethren, make a conversion, but it's temporary. And God always knows who's who. So I say to you, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Th because when you are judged by God at the end of your life, He's not going to judge you upon what your church believed about salvation or what your doctrinal statements said. He's going to judge you on you. You. You're not going to point the finger, well, brother so-and-so said this, doctor so-and-so said this, and I read the commentaries, they said that. He's going to judge you according to what he said in here. Amen? Okay, so people fall away. People fall away. It's happened here. I've seen it over and over and over again. And sometimes I'm surprised, sometimes I'm not. Anybody can be fooled, okay? So, falling away happens. Keep the thorns down. They're always going to grow back. Keep them down. I'm already irritated because I didn't get no sleep last couple nights. So, Lisa's pointing out the flower bed already. It's already got flowers coming up, and I already see weeds. I already see work to do. Doggone it. I don't want to do that. It's too cold. It's going to freeze anyway. It will. I think next weekend it's supposed to get down below freezing. Okay? So it, it happens with people. And don't give me this stuff. Well, they prayed a prayer when they was eight. I have a relative who his fourth overdose finally killed him. His fourth overdose. And his dad and mom were trying to do everything they could for him, and it just... And his grandma told me, I remember when he got saved at, when he was seven at Bible camp, so I know where he is. I don't... I don't buy it. I don't buy it. That's not salvation. It's not. Can you... Has anybody ever taken drugs being saved? Yes. And remember what I said. What will God do to them? Whoop the fire out of them. Like your daddy or your mama or your granddaddy did or your grandma or whatever. Okay? That's the loving God that we have. He will not allow us to stay in that condition. And the verses we just read about Lot, Lot was vexed living in Sodom. Wouldn't you be? 
Wouldn't that bother you to live there? But he had to put up with that stuff every day. Every day he had to keep his mouth shut, just keep his family safe, probably. But God delivered him. Okay? Noah wasn't perfect. Elijah wasn't perfect. None of these guys and gals in the Bible were perfect when God saved them and when God kept them, including David. They all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But God always brought them back. But with Saul, he didn't. He cut him off and said, you're done. Okay? He had to live like Ahab had to live. Elijah told Ahab over Naboth, where the dogs licked up, Naboth, where Naboth hung, the dogs are going to lick your blood up. And Ahab had to live the rest of his life with that in the back of his mind. Brother Reg Kelly preached a message called When Dogs Bark. Hardest message I ever had to listen to. Because he reminded the, his listeners, it makes you think about every wrong thing you had ever done. And it makes you repent all over again, even though you know God's already forgiven you. There are things I don't want to go back and talk about again. Little things I did when I was a kid. I don't want to, I don't, I don't want that anymore. Sometimes you hear the dogs barking. And it reminds you of what God said about your sin. Amen. Um, Second Peter, we're already there. That's pretty good. Look at verse Second Peter. Let's um, let's look at verse four. Second Peter. 1 verse 4 whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises what kind of precious promises are they exceeding great it means they're better than great that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature that's being saved having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust that is being saved and beside this giving all diligence add to your faith virtue and to virtue Knowledge. And the knowledge. Temperance. What is temperance? I don't like the, I don't like the new Bibles because in the new Bibles they use the word self-control and I don't like that. I don't think it's self-control. I don't have very much control over me. So I got a little temperance. Which means when someone has a bad temper, it means that they have not been tempered. It means they fly off the handle at the littlest things. Little things just make them go nuts, okay? Where some people are just, calm down, everything's going to be okay, okay? That's what temperance is. Temperance means, like with steel or glass, you've been through the fire and cooled down quickly. Amen? You've been through the fire and you were cooled down quickly. And God's, t what that does it alters the molecules of the steel or the iron or whatever it is. It changes the molecular structure and it hardens it so that it endures. They started flying jets at supersonic speeds. These jets started coming apart and they didn't know why. That's how they found out about metal fatigue. When we started flying experimental jets, Faster than five, six, seven hundred miles an hour, parts of the wings were coming off. And they figured out that it was because of metal fatigue. So they had to come up with a new way of developing new materials that didn't just tear off in mid flight. Okay? They figured out a way to make it better so they could fly faster. Okay? And that's what happens in our life is that we go through situations like we're going through now. This is a tempering process. This is meant to show us God is still in China. He's still God. And China's bad. Um, I watched a deal yesterday. A lady testified before Congress that most of our drugs, our prescription meds, the components are made in China. So right now, if we wanted... And what Trump's doing now, I agree with. He's getting China out of the picture. We're going to start 
I mean, I'm allergic to penicillin, but most penicillin comes from China. Do we trust them anymore? No, we shouldn't. But we had politicians make backdoor deals with them, giving them all the business that should belong here in this country. Now we need to make our own drugs because we got standards that they don't have over there. Okay? So that's temperance. Temperance means you made a mistake, you learned from it, and you were strengthened by it. Or you went through a hard time and you were strengthened by it. Or you fell into sin again. Again. And then again. But every time, God is strengthening you. He's chastening you. He's teaching you how to fight it off. So when it comes at you again, you've got a better shield and a defense against it than you used to have. Trust me, it works. It really does. Okay? I've, I've got a... I've got a name now for our conference who I was having May and uh, we were calling it maybe a Second Amendment conference or a Bible conference. It's going to be the Sword and the Shield conference because it's going to deal with the sword and the protection given to us, number one, by the Word of God, number two, by the Constitution. Sword and Shield conference in May coming up. I like it, by the way. No, we're not voting on it. That's what I'm calling it. <laughs> Second Peter 1.10, let me read this and we'll go. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, ye shall never fall. So who you, whose salvation are you worried about first? Yours. Which means, get off everybody else. Worry about yours first. Make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, You'll never fall. So quit worrying about somebody else falling. If they fall or if they stand, that was God doing it. And it will never be you. Never. A lot of good lessons here, amen? Father, open our eyes. Help us to see things. Help us to remember things that we saw or that we learned or that we believed. Help us to understand this Bible. And God, sometimes I have more questions than I have answers, but I know where the answers are. And Father, help each one to study, to show themselves approved unto you, to make their calling and election, to work out their own salvation. Not worried about everybody else, but work on us, God. Deal with me. You'll take care of everybody else like you take care of me. So God release us of some of these burdens that we're carrying because they're not our burdens to carry when they're too heavy help us dear god to cast our cares upon you because we know you care for us and keep us god keep us even when we don't want to be kept don't let us go we ask this in jesus name all god's people said amen That's